Hello, welcome to Swiss Watch Can. Welcome to a very special video. Today I have the pleasure of welcoming two guests in my studio. I'm here with Gael Petreman and Florian Bedat. Thank you guys for coming so much. Thanks to you. Thanks to you for welcoming us. Of course, my pleasure. Thank you for coming all the way to Zurich. I, I know you guys are super busy, so <laughs> I'm excited to, to host you here. And today we're going to talk about your brand, basically, which is uh, Petreman Bedat. Uh, no surprises here. I like it because it's like in the old times, like Odemar Piguet, Vasha Constantin, Patek Philippe, you know, two guys come together and make this beautiful, you know, creation. So, first of all, how, how did you guys meet or how did you like also start in watchmaking? Well, we started watchmaking school in Geneva yeah. in uh, 2007 and uh, we were in the same class. So we started like this and uh, I think in the second grade of the school, we really came together very closer because we were competing uh, yeah. about uh, polishing and quality and uh, it's always something we really liked to, to do it and uh, and so, yes yeah, so that's how, how we met and uh, after the four years of, of school we we dispatched yeah, I went to Germany and I went to Harry Winston so a little bit closer nice <laughs> <laughs> so you started Harry Winston you went to, to Germany to, to do to work with who with the Lange und Söhne? Yeah, nice. Yeah. The best of the best <laughs> in Germany. <laughs> nice. And um, he did uh, three years there and we always kept contact. So uh, by WhatsApp, uh, phone, etc. And uh, uh, sometimes he came back to Switzerland. We, we met together and he explained me a, lot, a little bit how it was in, um, in Lange und Söhne. Yeah. And it was very interesting uh, how it goes. He, his uh, evolution was very fast. Mm -hmm. Uh, he went to uh, <coughs> complication, everything I was dreaming yeah. of. And uh, so at Harry Winston, it wasn't, I, I mean, it was very nice for the beginning and I wanted to uh, increase, uh, no, not increase. Uh, to, to grow as a watchmaker. To grow, maker. exactly. Yeah. And uh, I say, okay, why not coming to Langanzone? And what did you do at Harry Winston? Or Harry Winston, which, which, which it was... maybe? A foof, it was... Uh, not the Opus liner. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. At first, I thought it was like, well, we work on You're the process like, yes. and stuff. But no, no, no. It's uh, first uh, two year, first uh, one and a half year. It was in casing, so putting yeah. dials and of everything uh, together yeah. for, I mean, a lot of uh, models. Yeah. yeah. And after, I went to a small atelier where we made uh, additional plates. So mm -hmm. we uh, we put together wheels and stuff, and we put on the movement. Yeah. And then we send it to in case uh, department. So yeah. it was a little bit more uh, interesting. Okay. And what were you doing at the time at Lange? So, so we see the parallel, you know? Yeah. <laughs> That's where probably switched. <laughs> <laughs> I started at Lange Zone in uh, November. Yeah. So um, between the, the end of the, you know, the summer vacation and November, I asked some old teacher if I came to, can come, come to the, um, the school mm -hmm. and just uh, learn minute repeater or stuff like that. Yeah. And uh, just, be in the corner yeah. and uh, and the teachers say yes, so uh, I enjoyed a lot <laughs> this part. And then uh, I went to, to Germany and I start um, uh, in the de in a department um, called the Academy. Um, and what, <laughs> okay, when I start there, I didn't speak any German. Yeah. And I was like, the first day I was like, they think I'm an apprentice or I wasn't <laughs> sure because it was the academy. I didn't understand what the, the PR, uh, no, yeah. not the PR, the HR told me. Yeah. And I was like, okay, what am I doing here? <laughs> but no, it wasn't uh, an apprenticeship. It, uh, it was like a department where they test you uh, if you are good in this, uh, for example, um, in this, uh, uh, for this department for yeah. reglage or pre-assembling or end assembling for six months and then they say, okay, we have a, a bench uh, in end assembling or um, uh. Uh, complication. Um, and uh, I, I went to end assembling, so all the, the old Lange ones, mm -hmm. so not the new ones uh, who came in 2014, something like that. Yeah. So the Lange one, uh, Zeitzone, Moonphase, uh, the normal one, the 1815, the big one, the small one. Uh, it was really cool because uh, you know you, you learn a lot even if it's uh, small complication. Of course. And uh, then uh, my chief asked me, uh, "What do you want to do?" And I say, "Complication, of course. <laughs> uh, chrono would be a dream." And he told me, "Yeah, we have a, a place, but in a um, perpetual calendar." I say, yeah, "Let's go." <laughs> <laughs> <Even better. laughs> yeah. 
And the perpetual uh, chrono, yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I went to, to the, the perpetual calendar department, uh, and back then, the old department of complication, it was one room, so perpetual uh, chrono, uh, yeah. so um, even if he, uh, I was in the perpetual calendar department, I could speak with the people who made chrono, course, yeah. it was really cool. Uh, I learned a lot. Um, mm. And then one, one year after, they say, okay, we have a place in the chronograph department. Uh, I say, yeah, of course. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> You're like, okay, <laughs> you insist. And then you also saw, heard everything and you switched. Uh, yeah, in 2006, uh, no, 14, I went to Langenzone. Yeah. And uh, same as him, I, I was like, no, no German at all. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> I went also to an academy for six months. And then after they, they put me in a department where we've did everything from A to Z, except yeah. in casing, yeah. which was Just not a problem. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I did only a small complication like Lange one, the new one, so yeah. who came in 2014, uh, 8015, the big one, and uh, 8015 with power reserve. Nice. So, uh, and uh, yeah, I did two years there, and uh, after uh, we always keep contact. And, uh, and how did you guys then transition to creating your own brand? Because <laughs> I, I met you guys first at yeah. Anderson Gen. Mm. Yeah. I was there in 2016, I think February or March, mm -hmm. and I remember this watch which yeah. you brought today on the channel as well. So, how was this transition and also what is this watch? <laughs> is it your first school watch or is it the first project? Or? Yeah, so um, to understand, it's um, in 2014 I wanted to come back in yeah. Switzerland. And I say, okay, if I come back, I don't want to, you know, come back uh, for encasing department. And I search uh, a bit, but it was complicated to to find a, a, a nice post. Yeah. And um, I kept contact with Anderson because um, my teacher worked for him 17 or 16 years. Mm. And um, when I saw him uh, at Basel World, he said, oh, you can speak German and uh, also uh, <laughs> English. Oh, you learned a lot of complication. Oh, that's cool. You can come to, to my workshop. Uh, you, you will be uh, independent yeah. and uh, you, you will work for me 50% and 50% for you. Mm -hmm. I said, oh, that's the dream, you know, because yeah. uh, my teacher told me all the stories about Anderson and how it works. And I was like, okay, that's so cool, you know. I didn't care about being independent. I just wanted to make something nice. Yeah. And uh, so I quit Lange. And uh, when I came, he said, ah, sorry, we have no more work. So you will be 100% independent, but I have no work for you. <laughs> I was like, okay, I don't care. I'm 22, you know, I, I came back to my parents' home. So yeah. yeah, if I don't have money, yeah. it doesn't matter, you know. <laughs> you know that's it. <laughs> give, give me 500 uh, francs per month and I can leave, you know. Yeah. That's not a problem. And um, then I made a bit of money and I said, oh, I really like the um, Jacques Hedro, uh, only um, you know time at twelve o'clock yeah. and with a nice guilloche. Yeah. Uh, I say oh, I want to make my own watch, uh, and I start thinking about that. And, uh, and then I ask some people around who can make the dial, who can make the case, and then I say oh, okay, and I can make a um, you know um, a sky map uh, yeah. behind yeah. it, and then you know the <laughs> <laughs> everything came in my mind. I say okay, let's do it, you know. Um, and uh, I worked for, for Anderson, so I knew how to uh, use a lathe uh, yeah. uh, and everything. So I made the plan because I didn't know how to make on computer. So I made everything by hand. I made a lot of mistakes because it's really thick. You know, yeah. It could be maybe <laughs> two or three millimeter uh, yeah. uh, thinner, yeah. but um, yeah, that's, that's the What's the, the dial mistake. made out of? It's a guilloche and... Yeah. The so it's uh, basically um, I came to Olivier Vaucher and they told me ah we can make a moon and uh, uh, with the you know the guilloche it make uh, like um, how do you say the light uh, the moonlight uh, okay yeah and uh, and behind I say okay I want to make the um, the sky map uh, with um, on a aventurine dial yeah so it looked nice. like a, a star. <laughs> And um, then I asked a case maker to make uh, the case and uh, he, he made the, the design because I, I trusted him. The only thing, <laughs> I don't tell people, but <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, it's he didn't want to make the crown. Yeah. And he said, yeah, do whatever you want, but I don't make the crown. <laughs> so, okay. so I made it by myself, but I had no money for the gold. <laughs> <laughs> so I made it in uh, steel, not even st ah, stainless so, steel. So the case is gold, huh? Yeah, the, the case is gold, uh, <laughs> but not the crown. <laughs> yeah, it's, <laughs> so, yeah, it's okay, it's for me. So uh, exactly. 
uh, <laughs> and that's, that's the story of the, the well, I made it for me, for, for, for myself, it's not for sale. And, yeah, uh, of course. Yeah, because uh, there are too many mistakes inside. And I <laughs> yeah. But no, it's nice to see also, you know, what you, so to speak, start with. And I, I'm pretty happy that you transitioned into something else then. <laughs> uh, I mean, you guys together. So tell me then about your first model, which had uh, a different dial than this one on the table. Yeah. Why did you decide to go with uh, that bit second, also the movement? I see now the German silver is probably inspired by Lange a bit. Yeah, it's a long story because we, uh, when we start our atelier in uh, Renan in 2017, yeah. Uh, we were next to Dominique Renault, yeah. who's co-founder of Renault Papier. Legend, yeah. <laughs> legend. Yeah. Very, yeah, very, Renault Papier, yeah. <laughs> yeah. very nice person, yeah. very inspiring, and uh, he shared everything he can. And so he had this uh, crazy project of this uh, DR01, uh, yeah. 360 degrees. Uh, with the escapement, huh? with the uh, exactly. Uh, yeah. Very uh, complicated Which escapement. Was designed by Andrea Furlan, I think. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. 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 That one. And uh, he asked us for a little bit help because he was only watchmaker in uh, his uh, mm -hmm. atelier. So we did a lot of polishing, uh, decoration, and uh, I assembled one non-functional movement. Yeah. So it was very nice to see. Normally, a watch is like round, yeah. flat, and this one yeah, is like this like a car <laughs> motor, 3D. And so it was very crazy to to assemble it. And uh, we say, okay, we why we don't uh, exchange money for that? We exchange yeah. hours. So. Mm -hmm. We trade hours for how we, how much hours we do for his engineer to work for our, our movement. So yeah. we Smart. had the, yeah, we had the opportunity to start from zero to make very our own movement. Yeah. And uh, so we decided to go to a dead bit second system because it's a very a complication we liked. Uh, it's very, um, how to say, uh, discreet. Yeah. And uh, we really wanted to, to, um, to uh, how to say, to go to collectors who are very, uh, they have a lot of um, uh, knowledge mm -hmm. yeah. and sometimes they teach more, <laughs> they teach us some, some stuff we don't know. So uh, it was very the complication we went to and uh, we were like uh, checking books and checking uh, images on internet to uh, search for inspiration and we went to a book uh, who has a, a school watch in it mm. uh, for uh, Robert Gaffner and he did, uh, it was a tourbillon watch. A pocket watch with a dead bit second system above it and yeah. we really like this system because it was at the top so it's yeah. the first thing you see when you turn the watch and you say okay like that can be cool uh, to make uh, this system it's not the very efficient the most efficient one mm -hmm. but for us like we say we lack decoration so for us it was very important to show to the people how uh, what we can do yeah. uh, and uh, that's why we choose this system and this complication. Yeah, it and, looks um, also beautiful yeah. <laughs> with the tails and everything. Yeah, exactly. What are the materials used in the, on the movement itself now? Uh, so here we have uh, all the main plates and bridges are in German silver. And all the steel parts are stainless steel. Uh, and for the wheels and the balance, it's uh, cuproberium. Uh, and uh, of course, rubies and uh, every steel parts are black polished, mm -hmm. except the uh, so uh, dead bit second bridge mm -hmm. and uh, after for the dial so for this for this uh, second edition we we went for a, a dial made in out of titanium yeah. uh, made by Comblemin, so the mm -hmm. manufacturer of dial from uh, Vutilainen. Yeah, exactly. uh, we were very surprised by the quality they can they could uh, give us because uh, when we went to, to Comblemin, we asked, uh, could you do uh, the same dial but in titanium? And they say, no, it's too much difficult, too much difficult to polish. And uh, and our designer tried to push them and say, no, try it, try it. They say, okay, let's try it. And they were, we were, every, everybody was surprised mm. by the, the quality. So we chose titanium because we wanted to make a very bright blue. Yeah. Um, uh, the same for each model, it's the mm. same blue because we use anodization for, yeah. uh, for the color. Okay. So it can be a very perfect blue uh, everywhere. So the crown also here is with the Petoman Beda logo. Uh, we also, so for this design, we wanted to show also the main plates in mm -hmm. the other side with the setting mechanism here and uh, also some rebreeds again yeah. to, 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 to show. Beautiful. And this is the uh, the model 
So this is a, a 1967 model mm -hmm. reference with the 171 uh, movement number. Yeah. We chose the 1967 mm -hmm. uh, number because it was the first year uh, uh, the first movement quartz were uh, uh, created. Ah, cool. So, and because of that bit second looked like exactly, quartz. Exactly. exactly. Nice. A lot of people <laughs> with the first dial, who was very classic, yeah. uh, didn't show all the mechanisms under. Yeah. They say, oh, it's a it's quartz. I say, no, no, it's not a quartz. It can show uh, behind. Turn around, yeah. Exactly. So that's why we called it uh, 1967. Yeah. To yeah, but I like it. It's very discreet. You know, mm -hmm. if exactly. you don't know what you have, it's okay. But yeah. I know. Yeah. You know. It's like for real collectors. Yeah. Beautiful. And, and you have also the different variations of the dial? You yeah, have we have... Uh, it's a blue dial and mm -hmm. there is one with... Uh, it's a rose gold case, white gold case, yeah. with uh, the dial is made out of steel. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah. And what's the limited edition of your watches currently, of these models? So the first edition were 10 in white gold and mm -hmm. 10 in rose gold, and this one is 25 in titanium. Yeah, so the nice. case is also in titanium. And I assume everything sold out. Right. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Congratulations. Yeah, right. Thank it's you. It's a good and a bad thing, I assume. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. It's complicated. It's yeah. complicated to um, oh, satisfy bro. Yeah, yeah. It's of course, of course. So now, what's the price point so people can understand? So the first uh, edition was uh, 59,800 mm -hmm. and this one is uh, 69,800. Got it. Yeah. And now, Gael, how does the movement work, the escapement? So people can, you know, Okay. Yeah. Well, this is not for the, the geek corner now. <laughs> yeah. Please, t take it away. So, just want to apologize because it's a prototype movement. Yeah. So uh, it's the second one that we made and uh, it's full of scratch, uh, full of dust. <laughs> so yeah, sorry for that. But um, anyway, it's uh, not that difficult, but maybe difficult to explain. Yeah, <laughs> so, for normal people like me. <laughs> <for sure. laughs> exactly. At nine o'clock, um, there is the second wheel. So this will turn one time per minute. Yeah. And uh, there is two um, layer of wheels. Under the three wheels, uh, you can barely see, I think, uh, on this video, and it will charge the deadbeat second wheel with a small uh, spring. And here, the anchor will just block the deadbeat second uh, wheel here, and it will release it one time per second. It is released uh, because of the second wheel who will push the deadbeat anchor one time per second. A bit complicated to understand. Yes, no, I, I get, is, is I get okay? everything. Yeah. Yes, yes, I completely understand. <laughs> so, <laughs> Sorry, so, I was now uh, uh, tuned out. I was like, I was like back in school. <laughs> no, like, like for like say, it's not the efficient one, but uh, it, it takes a lot of power, maybe 25%, yeah. 30%. So uh, it's not that good for uh, chronometry, but that's beautiful. <laughs> it's beautiful to look at. Yeah, exactly. And that's the why it's very special. I've never seen this on any other watch. Also. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, yeah. Also the focus, not to be just a nice finish, but also aesthetically 3D, you know, it's very high movement. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, which I didn't expect when I first saw it on photos. <laughs> but in person, I can, I can see the resemblance now, the, maybe the long inspiration, because they also have really high movements, mm. especially in the chromograph department. Yeah, exactly. So this is definitely a beautiful piece. Do you guys plan on ramping up production, make more watches per year, or yeah. what's, what's the goal for the future for you guys? It's uh, so we have that uh, on our mind because, of course, we can't deliver everyone for now, and um, yeah. we we will continue the dead beats again. But uh, we want to make uh, a three a normal three hand watch uh, to increase the production and um, uh, to satisfy more more people. Um, to be honest, for now we are focused on. Um, Making a complication, mm -hmm. we can say uh, not. We, we can't say now uh, which complication <laughs> is it. Come on, uh, <laughs> the, 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 nobody will see this. Video. <laughs> it's it's uh, between us three <laughs> and the camera guys. Bro. Okay. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> no, no, I'll but put a big uh, letter. <laughs> it, it, um, it will be a normal complication, nothing new, sure. uh, because we, we, we like um, traditional watchmaking, yeah. and um, but a bit different than uh, yeah. you, you can see, and uh, we keep this, um, how do you say, this identity mm. with the yeah. dial. Um, change. Uh, we will change the case, mm -hmm. um, and uh, we will keep. 
uh, this idea to black polish every steel part. Mm -hmm. um, it's a uh, it's a German style uh, on pocket watches yeah. that we love. Uh, we work uh, on some longer pocket watches yeah, and wow. we love that. Mm -hmm. And we said, okay, we want to make a complication like that with all black polish parts. So it will take a lot of time. <laughs> <laughs> it's finished in 3D, so. Uh, Nice. Waiting for parts. We'll see. It, it will take time. Yeah, yeah, we'll no, 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 no stress, date release. Yeah. But in the uh, meantime, you are delivering these exactly, pieces. Exactly, anyway, right? exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Beautiful. And yeah. when should we expect something new? You think this year or next year? No, no next year for sure. Year, um, yeah. Maybe mid 2023. Okay. We sure. don't want to take we'll any see. risk. If um, everything goes right, yeah. that's of I'm course. We'll yeah. yeah. <laughs> we keep you in touch. Excellent. <laughs> well, thank you so much for coming to visit me to also I can show these watches to my audience. They've been requesting it uh, a lot, actually, to okay. see. Peter, my bad heart. There you go. You are happy now? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, guys, let me know what you think about the watches. If you have some questions for them, leave a comment as well. Mm -hmm. They're going to be, you know, answering the questions. I'm going to force them to do so. Uh, <laughs> even if it's a complicated question, you know, no problem. Like more mechanical, uh, guy will be on the computer. <laughs> And uh, check out the other videos we make. We will make more uh, videos with watchmakers this year because it's always nice to show you in person, show the watches, and also show the story of you guys. So, guys, thank you so much for coming Thanks again. You. Thanks to you. Thank you all for watching. Like and subscribe, and I'll see you soon.